Hi, I'm Rebecca Bacarsel. Let's talk about The Tiger, a poem by William Blake. This poem is very often contrasted with his other poem, The Lamb. One is sweet and mild and, you know, fluffy, <laughs> and the other, the tiger, is fearsome and scary, deadly. And this is on purpose. William Blake has a philosophy of life that includes light and dark as being both created by God. He's very spiritual. He talks about seeing angels when he was a boy. Uh, he wrote these poems with a purpose in mind to convey that God is responsible for the dark and the light. That God did create the scary, fearful tiger and the sweet, cuddly lamb and that these two sides are not only in nature, but in humans and in God himself, herself, itself, in the way that the manifestation has to be, that creation has to be, God has to create light and dark, positive, negative, lambs and tigers. So with that backdrop, let's take a look at the poem, The Tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? Let's stop for a second here. This has six stanzas, and that was one and two. He's definitely using rhyme. Uh, bright night, they rhyme. I and symmetry don't exactly rhyme, but they almost rhyme. Skies, eyes, aspire, fire, and it continues like that uh, with two lines rhyming and then two more lines that also rhyme. Now, um, the rhyming, I think, implies that there is an order in the universe this way, two by two by two. We have, like I was saying, duality sets of two make sense if you're trying to talk about duality. But let's talk about what the lines mean just on a word level. Tiger, tiger, and the fact that it's spelled with both a Y is just doesn't matter at all. Our spelling conventions, uh, you know, just got kind of cemented only recently, in a couple hundred years. So he can use a Y if he wants to. So tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. So the tiger is not just furry, the tiger is burning, bright, dangerous, like fire, uh, the eyes you can imagine glowing in the dark or something like that. He's infusing the tiger with this fearsome fire quality. What immortal hand or eye, so what immortal creator that has a hand and an eye, a means to create the tiger, could frame thy fearful symmetry, could build the tiger, could, could create the outlines of the tiger, and not just the body of the tiger, but the, the artistry of the created creature. Who could do that? What hand, what eye, right? It's gonna be hard to create the tiger. And then he says, in what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? Where do you get the fire that burns inside of the tiger? The spirit? Is it deep in the sea? Is it up in the sky? In what distant place are you going to find that fire to infuse into the body of the tiger? Oh, it's going to be hard to find. On what wings dare he aspire? And we have this word dare later on too. So what wings would lift you up to the hope of creating such a thing? aspire means that you're hopefully trying to do something very difficult, raise yourself up, do more than you thought possible in order to create, in the case here, the tiger. And this has an allusion. An allusion means that Blake is referring back to an older story, a Greek story, in which Icarus, son of Daedalus, flies too close to the sun and his wings, made by his father, for he and son to escape a maze, a labyrinth, these wings melt 
because Icarus is too close to the sun and he falls into the sea and he dies. So here we have the mention of wings on what wings dare he aspire. So the creator of the tiger is attempting this grand project, attempting a lot, just like flying to the sun would be a, almost too much to attempt. But here he's going to succeed. The creator is going to make a tiger. But the author here is saying, wow, how do you, how do you dare try something that grand? And then what the hand dare seize the fire? What kind of hand would grab on to the fire of the tiger and try to make the creature? You're dealing with dangerous elements here. And I also think this seize the fire is referring to Prometheus, another Greek story, a character who took fire away from the gods and gave it to mankind. So when you're grabbing the god's fire, you're in trouble. <laughs> and he did get in trouble, but he brought fire to humans. And that's the story of, you know, how did humans get fire? But it's quite a risk. And so here, echoing that, Blake is saying, what the hand dare seize the fire? So what hand is going to attempt this grand project and actually grab on to the fire of a tiger? That takes balls, we might say nowadays. Okay, next stanza. And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? Wow, okay. So this is getting intense because he's thinking more and more about the creation of the tiger. And he's comparing it to blacksmithing, which is the art of making metal, you know, metal objects like horseshoes or swords. And for that, you've got to heat metal to high temperatures. You've got an anvil, which is where you hammer out the shape of the metal objects. Uh, it's very hard and dangerous work. And he's comparing the creation of metal objects in a blacksmith to the creation of the tiger. Now he says, what shoulder and what art is the blacksmith's shoulder and the blacksmith's knowledge? So the creator's knowledge, what force and what ideas you would have to have, the shoulder and the art could twist the sinews of thy heart, could actually create the heart of the tiger. And when thy heart began to beat, the tiger's heart now, what dread hand and what dread feet? What do you do now once your tiger starts to live? Whoa, dread. Dread is that sense of danger and foreboding and fear. So he's thinking, wow, maybe even the creator was, uh, you know, had a fearful hand and a fearful foot in order to stand in the presence of this creation of a fearful tiger. What the hammer, what the chain, these are blacksmithing tools, what furnace was thy brain? So the tiger's brain is being forged in a furnace in this comparison here. What the anvil, and the anvil is this piece of metal, like I said, that you shape everything else on. It's a big hunk of iron. What dread grasp? So this is the creator's grasp. Dare its deadly terrors clasp. So what kind of hold would you have on the tiger, how would you grasp the terrors that the tiger has within it? You gotta be, you know, you gotta be brave to create a tiger. All right, to grasp the deadly terrors. Now, last two stanzas. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Okay, so he ends repeating much of the opening stanza with just a little change with the word dare there. But let's go back up to the stars. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? So did 
the creators smile seeing this scary creature <laughs> was this the plan Blake seems to imply that it was and that maybe he did smile or at least that he felt that this was necessary we needed tigers in this world did he who made the lamb make thee well yes we, we don't have much choice about answering that question with yes God made the lamb God made the tiger figure it out there's some aspect of God that we're ignoring if we don't acknowledge that he also made the tiger so life is not all you know the happy lamb side of things the other side is there on purpose and what we want to make of that well philosophically we have to wrap our minds around that and that's the challenge here now let's go back up to the stars I said we were going to but now we really will when the stars threw down their spears what does that mean my favorite interpretation is that the stars throw down their light in in narrow beams and that by that light did his did he smile his work to see so by that starlight God can see the tiger and smile and be glad that he created the tiger um, and then they watered heaven with their tears well the stars maybe are feeling sad that the tiger was needed that, that this dark side of life has to be there too that we can't have just light we have to have dark that we can't just have nurturing we have to have destruction so the stars are crying for the suffering that's going to come from having you know the tiger side of life activated here loose on the earth now there are other ways to look at these spears that the stars are throwing down maybe the stars have actual weapons and they're leaving aside the weapons they're throwing down the weapons and saying no no more of that we're just gonna cry because we can't kill the destruction we can't kill the tiger part of this creation we just have to cry because it was necessary for for some reason so that's another idea or did the stars have spears weapons that they threw down that they actually did throw not throw away but but aim and throw at earth and then water heaven with their tears are they throwing down the uh, the painful into the earth life are they helping this creation have its balance of light and dark by throwing their spears down there I don't know that's a little bit of a reach I think but um, it's possible I I really think Blake may be more figurative here and saying that the light of the stars is falling like spears uh, but the reader is free to decide now let's take a look at the last stanza uh, of course did he who made the lamb make thee we've talked about uh, Blake implies yes uh, you know the creator did make both animals and then we have the repetition tiger tiger burning bright and now it has gathered resonance it means even more to us now it's not just the scary tiger but we've actually examined how scary the tiger is how grand this project was to create such a thing and now it's almost even more uh, more dangerous more numinous more glowing burning bright in the forests of the night and then the question again what immortal hand or eye what kind of creator is this that dare frame my fierce full symmetry that dare to do it dare to create the tiger it's as if uh, the creator has accepted a challenge you know God has said wow okay I'm gonna step up to the plate here and make some kind of tiger quite a scary thing just you know watch this but it's dare so there's some kind of worry some kind of risk but God says I take that risk and I'm going to dare to do it I'm gonna give earth this beautiful artistic and scary beast because earth needs to have one of these things and earth needs both light and dark and we go into the bigger philosophy um, that we have duality in this creation 
Okay, so there's the poem and some aspects of the poem. We, we didn't talk about every aspect, like the rhythm, for example. It's very forceful. It's, it's not the conversational kind of da-da, da-da. It's tiger, tiger, with using the, the rhythm that puts the emphasis on the first syllable, tiger, tiger, and it kind of drives home with forceful syllables. Um, so, okay, now we did talk about it. But um, there's more to say about this poem, and I hope that you'll be the one to say it. You could talk about it in the comments and let me know what you're thinking about it. Take care.